The world of Hyrule is a beautiful one, filled with beautiful landscapes that vary wildly. From hot deserts to icy peaks, gorgeous fields to pristine rivers and waterways, and each part is filled with a beautiful race. The Hylians, the Gorons, the Gerudo, the Rudo, and of course, whatever the heck Tingle is. <coughs> When dealing with fantasy races of all types, you do have to consider that they are made to give a certain aesthetic. They don't necessarily have to make sense by our own science, which is clearly the case for Tingle, but also for the aquatic Zora. I mean, look at them. Take a human, make them blue or red, and pop a fish on their head, boom! New race. But there is something I've always wondered, because these are the kinds of things I wonder about. Why do the Zora have breasts? I mean, think about it. Have you ever seen boobs on a fish? No? <laughs> well then, you're missing out. But no, no, in all seriousness, breasts plus fish don't mix. Breasts are exclusively a human thing, and giving dairy milk to your young is an exclusively mammalian thing. And the last I checked, Congress hasn't voted to classify fish as mammals like they did with pizza and vegetables. Fun fact, Google it. So really now, what gives? The most common answer people give is that it's just because of fan service and pervy Japanese artists. You know? Because, <laughs> you know, those Japanese and their fish, am I right? <laughs> Are people overly concerned with attractive women in Japanese games racist? Huh, must be. And maybe that's true, but this is a channel for people who use their heads. We overcomplicate things because it's fun. So let's do exactly that and answer the question, why do the Zora have breasts? Those of you who watch this channel regularly may know that I've done the same thing with two races from the Elder Scrolls, the Khajiit, cat-like humanoids, and the Argonians, lizard people. And here's a link for those up here. But looking at those, we've covered a mammal, a breastless mammal, but a mammal nonetheless, and a lizard, so a reptile. Crossing now into fish territory, are there any sea creatures with similar breast functionality? Wait, whales do. So do dolphins and the king of the Zora in Breath of the Wild takes from a whale, and there are also dolphin Zoras, but, but most of them aren't. Most of them do take from fish. But considering some of them take from mammals, if you were to anthropomorphize them, you could give them breasts, moving their mammary glands up to where humans have them. This may have been what the three goddesses did while creating Hyrule. While Nehru made the Zora for her waters, she based them on her own looks, as this is very common in religion and mythology. The reason humans look the way we do is because God or the gods made us to look like them, since humans are the closest things to gods on Earth. So when making all of the races, they still kept themselves in mind, especially when making the fish people. Not so sure about the Gorons, though. But also, not so sure about that theory in general thanks to Skyward Sword. As many know, it's the first game in the timeline, the most ancient. And these are the Perilla, Ancient Zora. According to Hyrule Historia, originally the developers were going to put regular Zora into the game, but then they were told to make the Zora look more primitive looking. So we get the Perilla. And this means that these seahorse parasol hybrids eventually evolved into the Zora. The Zora weren't created by the goddesses directly, it turns out. But what if they were still formed by them? After all, consider this. Wind Waker. Hyrule is sunken into the ocean. Seems like it would be the perfect place for Zora, right? Right. So they evolved into bird people. What? 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 Well, there is little to no reason for evolution to do that, so the goddesses must have gotten involved in their evolution. After all, Hyrule and the whole Triforce everything is super big on balance. And if one race such as the Zora suddenly became super powered thanks to a massive advantage like that, balance would be lost. So they stepped in and changed them. And, well, if the goddesses got involved here, then they could have done the same to the Perilla and made them more humanoid. But in being more humanoid, does that really just involve lumps of fat stored here? Why then only on the females? Are these functioning? They don't wear many clothes, so we can see that there is nothing inappropriate here. No nips in the slightest. So there is nothing for any milk to come out of. So are they truly just for the aesthetic? Well, maybe. Or perhaps it's a lung extension. Zora can breathe both air and water. But just like with fish that do the same thing, like the lungfish, transitioning between the two can be hard. So, these lumps may be extensions of the lungs where they store extra air or water to help ease the transition from one to the other. But then, why do the females only have them? 
Maybe males and females do, but to appear more feminine, the females keep theirs full. Again, possible, though a bit impractical. There must be some reason for just the females to have this. We know the Zora are more fish-like than mammalian since they also lay eggs, but perhaps they do share that milk trait with mammals. There are mammals that lay eggs and there are fish that give live birth, so stranger things have happened. In fact, this milk doesn't even have to be actual milk. I've covered this in the Argonian video, that pigeons have a milk-like substance in their throats that they give to their young. And as it turns out, there is a fish that does this too. Introducing the discus fish. Native to the Amazon River, the discus fish has a trait that separates itself from all other fish. Its ability to create and secrete nutrients for its babies. It's not exactly milk, but it works the same way. Inside their bodies, they create a highly nutritious mucus-like substance that then squanches its way out of its scales and onto its sides. The babies then huddle around, sucking it up. Mmm, 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 tasty. And since it just comes out of the skin, the Zora would work the same way. No nipples needed. The mucus milk just seeps out. There is one detail that needs clarifying, though. With the discus fish, it's not just the mother fish that secretes the substance. Papa fish does too. It's not a sex-based thing. So claiming the discus fish as evidence alone isn't enough to explain why the female Zora have breasts and the males don't. But with a bit of logical deduction, we can figure this out. Combining everything. When the goddesses made the Perella into the Zora, they self-imposed their own looks, just like many other gods. Making them anthropomorphic. This includes breasts on the female. And to further anthropomorphize them, they could have given these females the abilities to secrete mucus milk from their breasts to feed their babies, following both fish and human rules. So, there you go. I won't keep you any longer. I hope you learned something today. Here are a few other videos you might like if you liked this one. And there are multiple links in the description of multiple different ways to support this channel now. And until next time, please remember to never stop using that noggin.